The Justice Department says it will be weeks, not months, until more of Robert Mueller's report is made public. Tonight, we're told the White House still hasn't seen the full report. Uh, let's discuss this and more with one of the Democrats running uh, to defeat President Trump in 2020, Senator Kamala Harris is joining us. She's a member of both the Judiciary and Intelligence Committees, very important committees yes. indeed. Uh, Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so as you know, the House of Representatives voted 420 to 0 to see the Mueller report. The president says he wants to release it. Rudy Giuliani in the last hour was sitting where you are. He told me he'd like to see it released as well. Are you optimistic that you will get members of Congress and the American public an opportunity to see it, uh, see it almost in full, maybe some grand jury testimony, classified information might be redacted, but everything will be released? If everything goes as it should, if everything happens the way that it should happen, in the interest of transparency and also respecting the, the branch of, of, of government which is, has the responsibility for oversight, which is the United States Congress, yes, we will see the report. We will see the report in its entirety, minus whatever might be classified. And we will also, um, if everything goes as it should, receive the underlying evidence and information about the evidence that is, that, that is the basis for whatever is in the report. Yeah, but you're not necessarily 100% confident that they'll do that? I mean, Wolf, look, it, we have a, an investigation that went on for two years, and I am concerned that the Attorney General produced a four-page summary of a two-year investigation in two days. Um, I'd like to believe and know that we, uh, when Congress receives this information that we've been told we'll receive, that it will be comprehensive, that it will not leave anything out, that there will not be any gamesmanship um, being played around what is redacted and what is not. Because, listen, Congress has the responsibility, the ethical responsibility, the duty to have oversight over these processes. And when we're talking about the subject at hand, it is a subject that the American people have a right to understand and know. What went on? What did Mueller find out? What did that investigation involve? It's the taxpayer dollars. We want to see the whole thing, too, just <laughs> as, much as, as, much, as, much, as much as you want to right. see. It. Let's talk about the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Uh, as you know, the Trump administration, the Justice Department, uh, last night filed a brief supporting uh, a district court judge a ruling that declared the Affordable Care Act completely unconstitutional uh, and that all of it should be gone. What's your reaction? My reaction is that one of the issues that keeps most Americans up at night, regardless of who they vote for, is health care and whether they have access to health care that they can afford. And the idea that people are playing politics yet again with the Affordable Care Act is, is the height of irresponsibility, uh, pre-existing conditions. Tens of millions of Americans have benefited from the Affordable Care Act, including the, the removal of pre-existing conditions as a barrier to receive care. And the idea that we would turn the clock back because of some political purpose, instead of prioritizing public health, is irresponsible. And, um, and so we're going to have to fight again, against it again. Um, but, you know, we have been clear, I think, as a nation that we value and we want all Americans to be able to have access to affordable health care, period. And people, uh, you know, have pre-existing conditions should be able to have health insurance. Kids should be on their parents' uh, health insurance until the age of right. 26. Absolutely. A lot of that, and, and, unless there's new legislation, that could go away. And, and folks should not forget that when they last played this game, families from around our nation who could care less about the party with which they're registered to vote descended, came to the United States Congress and walked those halls reminding people, don't play politics with our health care. And I, I would hate that those families would have to travel again throughout the country to, see, to be seen and heard. Hopefully that people in leadership will understand that there are just certain things that should be done the right way and not play politics with people's health. I want to get to your education proposals Great. that you've just announced. But very quickly, because you're a former prosecutor, yeah. you understand the law. Uh, what do you think about what happened to Jesse Smollett in Chicago today? <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, Wolf, I'm completely confused. I don't understand. I don't know. I, I don't know the underlying evidence. I have, you know, there, there's a sealed document, obviously. I don't know. I'm at a loss. I think we're going to have to leave it up to the judgment of the, the prosecutor. I think we should leave it up to the judgment of the police chief to, to, and, and the mayor, of course, to give us some better sense of what's going on. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're confused, confused, all of us I'm confused, are confused. And you heard honest. Mayor Rahm Emanuel 
he's confused as well. Uh, and the Cook County prosecutor, uh, he says, didn't even inform him or the police commissioner that they were to drop these yeah. charges. But I think there's a point that the mayor made that is I would like to emphasize because I'm seeing it around the country and it is a very real issue, which is the seriousness of hate crime. And over the last two years, we've seen a growth of hate crime, be it um, in terms of race, be it religion, anti-Semitic crime, um, Islamophobic crime, crimes against that are born out of homophobia and transphobia. We have seen an increase around our country and, frankly, around the world. And we cannot play games with it. We have to take it very seriously because it obviously can result in lethal consequences if we don't take it seriously. Let's talk about your uh, education plan. And uh, as I like to say, nothing more important than kids' education, yeah. their health care, national security, if you want to be right. president. you got to deal with all those issues. Your That's plan, right. uh, you want to raise teachers' pay across the country right. by $13,500 a year, which is a significant pay increase. Yeah. Uh, the estimate is the price tag, $315 billion over, over the next 10 years. Right. So where's the money going to come from? It's simple. We need to it basically extend the number of people who need to pay estate tax. Right now, the rule is that um, only people within a state of in excess of $11 million pay estate tax. Well, um, multimillionaires can afford to pay more in terms of the estate tax. And so that's where it's going to come from. But I will also urge us, Wolf, on this issue in particular, to ask another question, and which is probably the first question that should be asked. What will be the return on the investment for doing this? And I will tell you, as we all know, the investment will be profound. Investing in the education of our children is one of the smartest investments we can make. And I am meeting teachers around our country who are working two, sometimes three jobs. I am meeting teachers who over 90% of them are coming out of their own pocket to pay for school supplies. We are not paying our teachers their value. There are two groups of people who are raising our children. Parents, and it's grandparents and aunties and uncles, and it's our teachers. And we've got to recognize the benefit that we receive from their work, which is the work of really caring about children and caring about the future of our country. Can you guarantee it won't add to the budget deficit, which, as you know, is approaching a trillion dollars a year? Well, let me tell you what is adding to the budget deficit. This tax bill that they pass that gives a tax benefit to the top 1% and the biggest corporations in this country. So when those same people start to talk about why we should not invest in our teachers, I actually am not sympathetic to their argument because I think their values are misplaced. This is a matter of what is the right thing to do. This is a matter of dealing with a teacher that I spoke with recently in South Carolina. Let me tell you, she is working full-time as a teacher and working full-time busing tables in a restaurant. And she shared with me a story. One day she's there working busing tables and she realized there were four other teachers also having a second job in that restaurant clearing tables to make their bills, to make their, their ends meet. And when we pay our teachers their value, do we want our teachers to work but two jobs you, or in, in, engage in professional It's not going to raise the budget deficit because you're going to need Republican support uh, to uh, you know, go after the estate tax. You're going to need Republican support to support this, uh, this pay increase for teachers. I am talking about an incredible return on our investment. And when we look at the essential functions of government, there are three. Public health, public safety, and public education. And we are giving the public education piece short shrift. Meanwhile, we have a secretary of education who is talking about cutting the federal budget in terms of spending that on supporting public education, a, 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 a secretary of education who wants to give teachers guns. No, you know what? Teachers don't need guns. They need a raise. They need a raise. Part of the program that you're having that states would get money from the federal government, but they themselves would have to increase, There's con exactly. contribute uh, right. to the pay increase right. for students right now. What do you say to those states who say, you know what? We don't want the federal government involved in the education in our states. Well, you know, I think that that theoretically is possible, but you, people are going to try and make this into a partisan issue. But you can look at Oklahoma and Arizona as two examples of states that are so-called red states that have actually addressed this issue. You can look at the teacher strikes that have taken place around the country in red states and blue states. This should not be thought of as a partisan issue. It really shouldn't even be thought of as a bipartisan issue. It's nonpartisan. It's about the education of our children. When I travel around our country, regardless of who people voted for, they know that our teachers are not getting the pay that they deserve. And, and Wolf, I'll put it in a broader sense. If we are a society that cares about children, we have to appreciate that one of the best ways we can express the love and care that we have of the children of our country 
is to invest in their education. And if we are going to invest in their education, we must invest in teachers. It's that simple. Do other public service employees around the country similarly deserve a pay increase? Uh, well, you look, we can look at what's going on in the country. In America today, almost half of American families are a $400 unexpected expense away from complete upheaval. In America today, in 99% of the counties in our country, if you're a minimum wage worker working full time, you can't afford market rate for a one bedroom apartment, which is why I am proposing that we actually change the tax code and give a tax credit for families that are making less than $100,000 a year, that a tax credit of up to $6,000 that they can receive at up to $500 a month. Because you're right, wages have not kept up with the cost of living. And I find it really pretty interesting when people want to tout about how the economy is doing so well, so well, and then you ask them, well, how do you measure that? Well, look at the stock market. Well, that's fine if you own stocks. Not everybody does. In fact, a lot of people don't. And then you ask them, well, how is the economy doing so well? What's the measurement? Well, look at the job rate, the jobless numbers. Yeah, people are working. Wolf, they're working two and three jobs.